Hi Minglings, it's Friday. In the third installment of Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs and the things I think are interesting from that book, we're gonna talk about coolness and cereal. This is the Cocoa Puffs of the Sex, Drugs, and Cocoa Puffs. Chuck Klosterman has this argument that coolness is primarily based on exclusivity. We see this in real life, we see this with people we know, you know, the cool kids in school are like, popular and they don't let anybody else into their group, they don't make friends easily with people who are outside of their little social clique. For whatever reason we deem these people cool because they're like a forbidden fruit almost. They're like, ooh, I want to know more about them but I can't because they're exclusive. Clubs requiring membership are, have the same thing. They want to appear exclusive because for whatever reason we think that because they're exclusive they're cooler, they're more interesting, they're something we want to be a part of but we can't. Chuck Klosterman likens this to cereal. A lot of cereal ads use that same tactic of exclusivity creating coolness. And when you think about it, he's right. And I've actually thought about this before when I used to watch a lot of TV and these ads were primarily on TV a couple years ago. We see less of them now. Or maybe I've just stopped watching kids' channels. <laughs> With Trix, you have the Trix rabbit who really wants the Trix cereal but he can't get them. They're, they say, hey, Trix are for kids, not for you, Trix rabbit. And for that reason, he really wants the Trix. Like, he's just pining for these Trix. The company hopes that kids will see, oh, Tricks are for kids, they're just for me. I'm part of the cool club that gets to eat tricks. Same thing with Lucky Charms. You've got Lucky the Leprechaun looking for this cereal and trying to get to it and it's at the end of the rainbow and he can't get it and it's just really difficult. But when he finally, I think he finally gets them, it's just like the best thing ever. In Cocoa Puffs too, there's that crazy bird. I mean, they don't really show these commercials anymore or again, maybe I'm just not watching them, but they have this crazy bird who's like jumping up and down. He's like, Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? That's the whole tagline, that's the slogan. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, he wants them. He wants them so badly, he can't get them. It's almost masochistic the way he denies himself these Cocoa Puffs. I mean, he wants them so badly, they're right there. Like, he can have them. It's not like the tricks are for kids situation. Because he denies himself, it makes it this like elusive thing. He really wants them, he especially wants them. They taste better, they taste great because he can't have them and then he gets them. And the cereal is cool because it's hard to get to. In my family, I always thought these cereals were kind of cool because, again, I couldn't get to them, but that had less to do with fictional characters and more to do with the fact that my parents are like, no, you can't have 26 grams of sugar for breakfast. I think this tactic is really interesting, and I'm really glad that Chuck Losserman especially pointed it out. As usual, he did so hilariously. What do you think? Do you buy that coolness is primarily based on exclusivity, or is there something else about things that make them cool. Are things only cool because they're hard to get to or are they cool for some other reason? I totally buy this argument and I'd love to hear what you guys think. Zach, I'll see you tomorrow.